Hi everyone and welcome to uh, Facebook Live. It's a pretty special Facebook Live today because today is World Lemur Day. Uh, so one of my favorite days of the year because lemurs are such an awesome animal. My name's Ashley, this is Colleen. We're zookeepers here at Franklin Park Zoo in the tropical forest. And we are home to four ring-tailed lemurs. Uh, so the one she's feeding right here is Katika. And then Nebby is right behind her, and Sophie's all the way in the back. So Katika and Sophie are uh, the children of Nebby, and then we also have a male named Maki. He's not out right now. And there's a reason for that. So he had to be hand-raised when he was really young uh, in order to survive. Unfortunately, what happens though when uh, lemurs are hand raised is as they get older and hit maturity, they actually tend to be hyper aggressive towards uh, humans, uh, especially ones that raised them. So if you ever hear uh, and you see one of us passing by the window, he's the one right up in front trying to get at us. Uh, it's actually one of the main reasons why as cute and cuddly as these guys are, they do not make great pets. So they are wild animals, they are not domesticated. Uh, if you see Colleen's wearing that jacket and she's using a spoon to feed, that's for her safety. Uh, they're pretty mild tempered, these three, because uh, they were parent reared, uh, but it doesn't mean uh, that they aren't wild animals. So even though they're cute and cuddly, they do not make great pets. <laughs> uh, lemurs also need to be with their own species, uh, so it's just not fair to them to house them. Uh, the pet trade is actually a huge problem uh, for the protection of these guys. So these guys are endangered. A third of all lemur species are uh, critically endangered, which is one step away from being extinct. 98% of lemur species are threatened. So these guys come from Madagascar, uh, which is an island off the coast of Africa. It's the only place you're going to find lemurs in the wild. Uh, we have a question from Laura. Do they all have striped tails? They do, and all of those striped tails are different, just like our fingerprints are to us. And these guys spend about 50% of their time on the ground. Uh, and then the other 50% up in trees, which is more than any other lemur species. Most of them hang out more at the treetops. So they use that tail almost as a flag to say, here I am. They are uh, female dominated, so you'll have a uh, head female, head honcho in the front. And then their groups can be as little as six, but can be upwards to 30 individuals in a group. And they're all led by that one dominant female and then some subdominant females. Question, do they ever go outside? Uh, so they do not. This is an all indoor enclosure. And they can't hear me because you said they do not go outside. Yeah, they do not go outside. So in captivity, uh, ring tailed lemurs can live. 20 to 30 years. Uh, in the wild, they can live upwards to about 15 to 20. And they typically weigh about five to eight pounds. So we do a lot of training with these guys. Uh, one of the biggest ones, and it's the whole reason we're actually foraging the lemurs right now, is we have a diabetic lemur. Uh, it is the one being fed right now. Her name is Sophie. And uh, like human diabetes, she does require insulin. Uh, so she is trained to go into a chute, let us close her in that chute, and then squeeze her down and give her a voluntary injection of insulin every morning. Uh, the reason we do the foraging midday is just so uh, we can keep her pumped full of snacks, make sure um, her levels don't get too out of control. Um, pretty well is maintained with this. So all of them have been trained to go in the chute. Uh, in fact, just last week, we were able to successfully, voluntarily give them all their COVID-19 vaccines. 
So they are primates, uh, so they can actually share a lot of the same illnesses that we can. Uh, they're a little bit more primitive of primates, uh, so lemurs are considered prosimians. So you've got apes, which are going to be your gorillas and your chimps and your orangutans, and then you have monkeys, and then you have lemurs. So Nebi is our oldest. She's 17. And then Maki is 13, and there are two kids. Katika's uh, nine, and Sophie is 11. So here uh, at Franklin Park, we feed them a variety of food. Um, everyone except Sophie gets apples, sweet potato, carrots, grapes. Sophie can't get any of the very high uh, sugared items, so she gets sweet potato and she gets carrots. And then they're also on a grain diet, uh, and it's a supplement for them. Uh, so it's just a it's a little pelleted diet that we soak, uh, and it gives them all of their needed uh, nutrition. In the wild, they are herbivores, so they would eat leaves and uh, branches and fruit and uh, any berries they might find. And they're very important uh, to the ecosystem in Madagascar because lemurs are seed dispersers. So what that means is they eat the food, it kind of uh, fertilizes um, so that when they poop it out, it's in its own natural fertilization and it creates new growth in Madagascar. These guys, uh, their biggest threat is, like I was saying, the pet trade, but also uh, deforestation and um, hunting. So unfortunately, they do get hunted for bushmeat. So without these guys, uh, you know, think of what Madagascar would be. These are huge uh, dispersers from the island of Madagascar. So ways that you can help, uh, for one, don't support lemurs in the pet trade, don't have lemurs as pets. Uh, second, uh, come visit Franklin Park Zoo. Uh, portion of your tickets go to conservation work here at the zoo. And just by tuning into Facebook Live today, you're doing your part because you're learning about these really awesome animals. Like hearing about the lemur stink bites. Yes, so uh, they have scent glands on their uh, arms and on their chest. And Maki's really good at doing this when we walk by. Uh, what they'll do is if they feel threatened or they're trying to seem tougher or bigger, they'll get into what's called stink bites. So they'll rub their glands and then they'll rub it on their tail and then they'll waft their tail at you. Uh, and that's just to say, this is my area, this is my territory. Uh, try to be a little bigger and badder than you. So if you see all the little cups around, uh, that's uh, enrichment. So we do enrichment with these guys daily. Uh, there's also a little ball that I put perfume on so that they can stink fight the uh, perfumed ball. And so the purpose of the cups is we can disperse their food uh, throughout all of the exhibit. We have more uh, uh, feeding opportunities for them. And enrichment is anything that's going to elicit a natural response. So the perfume elicits this uh, scent marking. The browse is in there that's willow. Uh, it's something they would naturally uh, eat in the wild is browse. So ring-tailed lemurs are actually the, or uh, lemurs in general, are the most endangered mammals on the planet. Right, 
<laughs> so this is Nebby up front. Like I said, this is Mom to Katika and Sophie. So she's eating that chow I was talking about. It's called um, Primate Biscuit. And she is our uh, matriarch of this group as well. So we'll do all different types of enrichment. Uh, this is one. We'll also use puzzle feeders uh, so that they have to manipulate to get the food out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this Facebook Live, uh, and thank you so much for celebrating World Lemur Day. They're such a special animal and hold such a special place in my heart. They're definitely worth protecting.